to come on here and um, share a little bit of the love of God, the Word of God, and praise His wonderful name on the housetop. Hallelujah. You know, if it's just, you know, like, just, um, you know, raising your hands up to God or clapping your hands. I mean, if you don't have a voice, like my voice right now is super hoarse, but that's okay because what I do is I'm giving what I have to God. And if you do what you can for God, I promise you, it does not go in vain. It does not come back void. But hallelujah, he sees your dedication today. He sees the life that you live for him each and every day. Hallelujah, I love Jesus. He is truly my life and I depend on him each and every day. He has done so much for me that I couldn't even explain. Hallelujah. Um, so, I had a wonderful Bible study with some ladies last night, and we had studied on prayer and forgiveness. So, um, it was a wonderful time just being able to be in the presence of God and His Word, and, you know, just you know, just talking about his word and what it means and the things of in the Bible, you know, a lot of times that we don't even realize it's in the Bible. But um, I want to share some of these scriptures that I had looked up and um, shared with my two sisters that we done a Bible study with, you know, last night. So um, first, I want to start about prayer. I want to talk about prayer. Praying is something, I mean, that's one reason why my voice is hoarse because 
I like to pray. Um, and I'm not, you know, one to beat around the bush. You know, if you need prayer, um, I'm not going to just be like, okay, prayers. You know, people nowadays, they say, oh, praying for you as just like a, you know, almost like a manner now. Like, thank you. Yes, sir. No, ma'am. No, whatever, you know. But it's more than that. I mean, prayer is the key to the kingdom, people. Prayer, I mean, that's how we reach God is praying. Hallelujah. So, the first one, the first verse I want to read is in the book of Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. It says, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplications with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. So if you've got a request, make it known to God. Pray, tell him, say, Lord, you know, I, I need this. I need you, Lord. I need you to work out this situation. That is what he's here for, you know, to help us and lead us and guide us. John chapter 15, verse 7 says, if, and I if is a big word because I want y'all to hear that word, I if, if you abide in me. If you abide in me and my word, my words abide in you. Okay, what is words? Hallelujah. First of all, it says, if you abide in me. Okay, if you abide in God, if you serve God. Okay, and then it says, and my words abide in you. So you're taking that word of God. And if it's telling you to do something, you've got to do it. If it's telling you not to do something, then you cannot do it because that's what the word of God is telling us here. That's the Bible is our roadmap, people. It's going to lead us the way that we should go. We can read it and apply it to our lives and it's going to lead us to heaven, but we can read it and then we can be disobedient people. And then we're going to go to hell because that's just the way it works. Hallelujah. And it says, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. So, you've got to let this sink into you. If you abide in me. So, if you abide in Jesus, and my words abide in you, that Bible, you take it and you apply it to your life each and every day. Ye shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. So, hallelujah, we have favor in Jesus Christ if we are a true Christian of God and we are living each and every day and loving him and serving him each and every day. Mark chapter 11, verse 24 says, Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. Okay, so it says, what things soever you desire, if you desire a closer walk with God, you desire understanding or revelation of the word of God. It says, when you pray, hallelujah, when you bow your head, when you pray, whenever you say, God, I need you to do this. God, I need you to work out this situation. It says, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. But if you come to God and you're doubting, you might as well not even ask God for it because you must believe. Doubt is of the devil. But if you believe, hallelujah, he said, you shall receive it. Hallelujah. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17 says, pray without ceasing. Well, you know how many knows we got to pray? We got to pray in the morning. We got to pray in the middle of the day. We got to pray at night. We got to keep God in our mind. Because if you ain't keeping God in your mind, what are you keeping in your mind? You need to keep Jesus bubbling up all the time. That way, that's all you're thinking about. Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the middle of the day, Jesus at night. Hallelujah, Jesus, all the time. I don't want no, no room for the devil to enter in to my heart, my mind, or my soul. Romans chapter 8, verse 26 says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered hallelujah the spirit the holy ghost and fire hallelujah without that hallelujah i wouldn't even know that god was real in my soul but i appreciate him leaving that comforter to me hallelujah matthew 6 verse 7 says but when you pray use not vain repetitions as the heathens do for they think that they shall be heard for their much speakings hallelujah there's some people it's just like they they practice it. They write it down. They they want to say, uh, you know, just 
sound all professional. I'll tell you now, um, I'm not the smartest. I'm not the one with the, the biggest degree or the biggest talents or anything else. I'm just one of those people that is on fire, loving Jesus, serving Jesus, and I want to lead and guide others to Him. Because that's why we are placed on this earth is to try to share the love of God with each other. But it said, you know, don't just use those vain repetitions as the heathens do. But it said, they think they shall be heard for their much speaking. But you know, it's not all about that. God seeth the heart. He searches the deep things. He knows your very intentions. And matter of fact, he knows the hair that's upon your head. He knows what you mean. He knows your intentions, if they're good or bad. Because he ain't dumb, that's for sure. And Jeremiah 33, verse 3 says, Call unto me, and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. How many knows that God will show you things that you don't know? He will, he will lead you and guide you, whether it's uh, at a Bible study, whether it's in church getting taught, whether it's um, through reading the Word of God, or uh, whether it's God speaking to your heart's door and pricking it and uh, giving you a conscience of saying, hey, something ain't right here. God will show you things that you don't know if you have an open heart, mind, and soul. But you've got to be open to hear what the Spirit is saying. Matthew chapter 26, 31 says, Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. How many knows whenever Jesus was dying on the cross? Exactly. He, you know, his flesh was weak, but his spirit was willing. You know, he was willing to die upon that cross for us. The love that he had for us. Oh, and I'm telling you, some kind of love that nobody else in this world has for you and I. James 5 and 16 says, Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. If you want somebody to pray for you, you want them to be righteous. You want them to be a true saint of God. You want them to say, hey, I need prayer. I need healing. I need deliverance. I need somebody to come and agree with me. That way I can reach heaven. That way I can reach God. Hallelujah. Because this is the righteous the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. That means it's, it's successful. Hallelujah. Matthew 6, verse 5 through 8. Hallelujah. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of me. And verily I say unto you that they have their reward. So, um, you know, people that want to be seen. I'm not saying that it's wrong to praise God in the synagogue. I'm not saying that it's wrong to praise God in the streets. But I'm saying if people are just going out there to be seen, God knows your intentions. He knows if you're trying to be uh, something that you're not. He knows your very intentions. So, we have to be careful because if not, you will never be blessed for your work. You will never be blessed for that because your blessing is going to be being seen of people. But God will open, he will reward you openly if he sees the very intentions of your heart. He will open rewards you and bless you unconditionally if you are real for him. Hallelujah. Ephesians 6 and 18 says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplications for all saints. Psalms 34 and 17 says, The righteous cry. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you, I'm one of them that cry. I can tell you, I'm the biggest cry baby. When it comes to God, when it comes to living right and being dedicated and holy and separated from this ungodly sinful world i am the one to be crying i'm the one that has a burden for the lost i'm the one that's out there saying god don't let them don't let this time slip out from under them lord lord don't let them die lost because i'm gonna tell you i'm the one that's crying out because i don't want no souls to be lost but it says the righteous cry and the Lord heareth. Hallelujah. So if you're a saint of God, if you're a Christian today, and you're crying out to the Lord, I want to let you know that the Lord hears you and delivereth them out of all their trouble. 
So, hallelujah, my Jesus, oh, let me tell you, he can deliver you out of the midst of the fire. He can deliver you out of any trouble or trial that you are facing today. But you must believe and receive it. Hallelujah. Luke 18, verse 1 says, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Right, let's read this one more time. It said, The men ought to always to pray. He wants us to always pray. And that's why I'm such a big person on saying, pray, pray, pray. Pray in the morning, pray at night, pray through your day, pray when you. Any time, you know, during the good days, during the bad days, through the hills and the valleys, no matter what, pray, pray. And it don't always have to be about yourself. Pray for somebody else. Pray for your brothers and your sisters that's in need. Pray for the poor. Pray for the people that's sick. Pray for the people that are in prison, in the nursing homes. Pray for the people that don't know the love of Jesus. That some glorious day that they might run in contact with you. And you can share the love of God with them. And the word of God with them. Alright. So I want to start moving on to forgiveness. This study was really good last night. I just couldn't help but just, just try to share it. Um, out with y'all today. I hope and pray that this helps someone because I know it truly blessed my heart. Mark chapter 11 verse 25 says, And when ye stand praying, forgive if ye have aught against any that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. So it says whenever you are praying, you've got to forgive somebody. If somebody hurts you, if somebody said something mean and ugly to you today, just know that you've got to forgive them. If somebody said something mean to me, I forgive you because I love you. I don't care if you don't like me. I don't care if you don't have no confidence or faith in me because I'm going to tell you I love you. I love of your soul and I will pray for you because that's the love that God has placed in my heart to love other people and to care for them whether they like me or not I can't help that but I love everybody and I forgive those that hurt me because I'm human. I'm flesh and blood. I have feelings. Yes, words hurt. You know, people say sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. But let me tell you, that's the biggest lie that I've ever heard. We should watch our words to others. We should watch them because you can hurt somebody. You don't know what people is going through. So we have to be kind and show the love of God towards each other. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 32 says, And be ye kind one to another. Hallelujah. Was I not just preaching this? Be ye kind one to another. Tender hearted, forgiving one another. Even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Matthew 6 and 15 says, But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Hallelujah. We better listen to this one more good time. It says, If ye forgive not men, their trespasses. If you don't want to forgive them, if you want to hold a grudge against somebody that's hurt your feelings, that's tore you down, that's spit in your face, if you don't want to forgive them, oh, neither will your father forgive your trespasses, your sins, your iniquity. So it's very important to forgive others. I had uh, seen this little thing. I don't even know if it's real or not, if it's true or not, but it was this pastor. Um, he said that he... Um, he, you know, he, he was preaching the gospel and everything. Well, him and his wife had had words and they got upset at each other. And, um, you know, they went to bed and um, the wife said, Lord, you know, I forgive him. I, I just, you know, I know things didn't go the way we should have handled this situation different, Lord. And, um, you know, that pastor, he was upset. And, you know, he didn't pray that night. He didn't ask God to forgive him about getting, um, you know, ugly with his wife. And he didn't ask God, you know, say, Lord, you know, just I forgive her for, you know, for, you know, being out of line, Lord. Tomorrow will be a better day. But let me tell you, he, they both had died. And, you know, she went up to heaven. And he went to hell. And, you know, she was up there rejoicing and happy. And the, the pastor was down there in hell. And um, he, he was like, 
Why, why is she up in heaven and why am I in hell? Like, um, I've done this. I've preached the gospel. I've done, you know, many mighty works, Lord, in your name. Why am I down here? And, you know, God spoke to him and said, oh, well, you didn't forgive your wife. Y'all had a, uh, a disagreement and, uh, you didn't forgive her and you, you died in your sleep that night. And, uh, she prayed and she said, Lord, we're going to have a better day tomorrow. Lord, we're going to forgive each other, Lord. And, uh, Lord, just help us be better people tomorrow. And you know, it just clicked to him and it clicked to others that, you know, that's just a good example, whether it's true or not, that we should know that we need to forgive others and love each other because that's what God would want us to do. All right. So, chap, let's see um, where we got to. First John chapter 1, verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So if we confess our sins, say, God, Lord, I know I've, I've messed up, Lord. Lord, I've done this sin, and Lord, I know your word says that it's a sin. So, Lord, I need to say, God, I'm sorry, Lord. And, Lord, I know that you're faithful. And, Lord, I need you to forgive me. And it says to, that He would forgive us us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness we just got to come to him humble and honest as a little child james chapter 5 verse 16 says confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that ye may be healed the affection for prayer of a righteous man availeth much luke 6 27 says but i say unto you which hear Love your enemies. Do good to them which hate you. So, y'all better listen to this. It says, but I say unto you which here, love your enemies. People that don't like you. People that despitefully use you. People that say hurtful things to you. It says, do good to them that which hates you. So, we got to do good to them. Uh, Colossians 3 and 13, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13 says, There hath no temptation. I want y'all to listen to this. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. So you may be tempted. You may be tried. But it said that God wasn't going to give you such of a temptation above your level. Pretty much is what he's saying as I'm paraphrasing this and explaining this and breaking it down to you. And then it says, but with the temptation, he also will make a way to, of an escape uh, that you will be able to bear it. So there's God is always going to make a way escape for you to be able to, you know, avoid the situation, to escape this situation. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 12 said, Hate it, hatred stirreth up strifes, but love covereth all sins. So, uh, you know, when it says love covereth all sins, that love to me, that, that just makes me say Jesus. And you say, why is that? I said, because what is true love? True love is Jesus dying on that cross for us today. Oh, let me tell you, true love is him, you know, uh, letting them crucify him to that cross. You know, he didn't even know that if we would even ever even love him back. But you know, he knew that if he died upon that cross, that was, you know, one glorious day that, you know, we could have a chance for him to prick our hearts, for, for him to have a chance to convict us and us to have a chance to turn our wicked ways unto him and glorify him and lift him up and let him save us and deliver us and set us free from the sinful world. Hallelujah. I thank Jesus for a wonderful um, love that he placed in our life each and every day. And I, I promise you, there's just something about that Jesus. He's just so real to me. He's just my my best friend, and he's truly my life. And I depend on him each and every day. 
um, you know, the breath in my lungs. He, bre he breathed breath, breath in my nostrils to make me a living soul. So I got to have that breath of life in me. You know, that blood flowing through my veins and that heart pumping. I thank him for making me. I thank him for creating me. Because, you know, a lot of people just think, oh, it's just a human cycle. But no, it's not. God created each and every one of us in his own image, Lord. And I thank you for that, Jesus. He's been so good to me. I could never explain to how wonderful he's been to me. But I'll, if I could, I sure would. But I can only explain to you as best as I know how. But um, I'm just, I, I, I feel so good in the spirit today. Um, my heart is just overflowing with God's love and his mercy and forgiveness. And I truly do thank him for that. And giving me the love for other people and compassion for other people is like no other. You know, when I was out here being a sinner, when I was backslid in this ungodly world, doing what I wanted to do, I didn't care for nobody. I was a selfish person. I was real selfish. All I cared about was me and myself. All I cared about was, you know, uh, what, what was going to be good for me. I didn't look out for other people. But, you know, when God enters in your heart and he cleans you up inside and out, you become a better person and you, be you become what God wants you to be. And I, I appreciate God working on me each and every day. I truly do. It's just the little things. And I enjoy helping people. I, I enjoy, uh, you know, um, just the little things. Like today, there were several things that, that made me happy. And, um, you know, uh, just surprising people. Um, like, just for instance, um, my parents had come to my house on a four-wheeler. And I said, well, what are y'all going to do? And they said, well, we're going to ride to Ryanzi. And I said, okay. Well, we rode to Ryanzi and we pulled up to my aunt's house. And I said, call her. Let, let's, let me, you know, tell her, grab her jacket and let, let's take her for a ride, you know, because, you know, it's just something, you know, it's just something to surprise somebody and, you know, show them that you do love them, you know, show them that you do care about them because sometimes some people just don't feel like they're loved. You know, some people don't feel that nobody cares for them and just to show up out of the blue and say, hey, you know, come on, let's take a spin. Let's go get some fresh air. Let's clear our minds. And, you know, that just, that makes my heart happy to show that I care because I was never like that. But God changes us. He changes us, people. And then um, another little situation happened today. Um, I, w I went to the store and um, there was um, eight uh, pounds of food left. And um, I said, um, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll take it, you know, no big deal. And um, I said, I'll buy it all. That way, you know, you can empty your your pan for the day and, you know, it'll be off your hands. Well, this little girl was in front of me and, um, you know, I didn't know what she was there for. But as um, soon as I walked in, they was like, hey, Jennifer, uh, you know, we've got uh, eight pounds left and uh, we uh, was you wanting it all? I said, yeah, that's fine. And that little cashier looked at that little girl, and I know she was probably in her early 20s, and said, I'm sorry, ma'am. She just bought it all. And I looked at her. I said, ma'am, I said, well, how many pounds are you wanting? And she said, oh, I'm only just wanting one pound. I said, look, I said, I'm going to share with you. And, you know, that was just so a blessing to me to be able, because, you know, I could have been selfish. I could have took everything. But, you know, my heart reaches out for people, to love people, and to share things. And, you know, that, that girl, she was just smiling. She said, thank you so much. She said, this is the nicest thing, you know, the nicest thing that anybody's done for me, you know. And I was like, well, it's okay. I was like, that's the, that's the way we're supposed to be. And so they fixed it, and they, they got her out the door, and there come this older gentleman. And I was still waiting on my food. And he said, well, I heard y'all had some uh, crawfish. And uh, he said, uh, I was just wondering if I could get one or two pounds. And, uh, and, I, and I said, uh, yeah, you sure can. And uh, that, that cash lady, that cash, uh, cashier lady, 
she smiled so big and it would just made my day and um that gentleman he thought i worked there because i said yeah you sure can have two pounds <laughs> and then that cashier lady told him and said well this uh, lady right here she had bought all of it but that's why she said that she don't work here she just said that you could buy two pounds of hers and you know he smiled real big and you know it's just the love of god you know just simple things of kindness of like things that i was talking about of prayer and forgiveness and kindness and tender heartedness that god places in our lives that we don't realize and you know then i had um um someone had sent me a picture and said hey can you print this out for me and i said yeah i said i'll, I'll try my best i printed it out and i looked at it and i said well i highlighted some of the words on there and there were some of the words that you really couldn't read and i started writing it out and um you know try to make it look better and, you know, it just blessed my soul to be able to, to help somebody in need. You know, you say, well, that's just, that's just crazy. I mean, but it's not. Whenever God gives you a clean heart to help others, to share with others, to treat people good, it's, it's something that makes you love yourself just as much as you love others. And vice versa, you love others as much as you love yourself. And, you know, it just made my heart real happy today to do something kind to for other people. And, you know, to other people, you know, it, it meant a lot to them, but it meant way more to me to get to help somebody than it did. You know, they always say, um, it's better to give than it is to receive. But I'm telling me, I I just had a good time today. And, you know, trying to bless others and trying to, you know, show the love of God in any little way that I can. And I appreciate God for, you know, working on me daily. But y'all, I know I've been on here a while and I hope that someone, and I pray that someone gets something out of this and it blesses your heart. Um, I feel like I've delivered my soul. And I hope and pray that this helps you some way, somehow. If I could say one thing to help one person, that that means the world to me. But y'all, y'all have a wonderful night. And remember, God loves you. I love you. Keep God number one in your life. And you're going to be all right. Bye-bye.